What's going on? Back again with a, another training session for you. Uh, this is uh, my first leg session of the week. Doing it on Thursday though, because uh, obviously I'm a day behind with the, the forced rest day that I had to take when everything was flooding. Um, yeah, it's about midday. Usually I don't train this time of the day because I like to get work done first, but I'm trialing out a new schedule where I do my training midday. I get one small block of work out of the way in the morning before I train and then I get the other block of work done after training. Uh, and if this goes well, I'll probably transition all of my sessions to earlier in the day, just so that I don't run into the issue of it raining to the point to which it floods and I can't get my training session done for the day. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Um, full stack here. Uh, and now that I'm in that maintenance block, like I mentioned in the previous uh, video, um, my volumes kind of like shave back a little bit. So instead of like, say, four sets, for example, on an exercise I'm doing three, or instead of doing three sets on an exercise I'm doing two. So everything's just been scaled back a little bit. Just to pull that total weekly volume load down a little bit. Um, because obviously I don't, without all the super supplements uh, in place to help with recovery as much and with food being a little bit lower, uh, recovery is not going to be as high, like my capacity to recover isn't going to be as high. And on top of that too, like even if it was, the idea of this maintenance block is to kind of take a step back, allow the body to kind of have a bit of uh, additional recovery before I start flogging it again. Um, that just helps kind of keep the body happy and it avoids running into issues in the long term, like down the track. If you have these like proactive momentary breaks throughout the, the course of a macro cycle, like a yearly training plan. So yeah, um, first set, I've got two sets of this, so nothing substantial, but I'm just going to do AMRAP because I've maxed out the machine and 20 reps, depending on the day, might be a little bit sub-maximal. I'm still keeping effort high. Uh, I know I'm meant to keep a few reps in reserve, but I just can't do it. Uh, I feel like a little bitch, so I'm just going to do the less volume, but same full effort. Oh. 
lying hamstring holes now. Actually looking forward to them. I get a nice kind of like, nice pump and it really helps with the rest of the session. I find it warms the knees up really effectively. Um, you'd think that like a leg extension would do a good job at warming the knees up, but I think doing like a, a less intense, um, less demanding hamstring curl variant does a better job. So yeah, we've got that next. Then our leg extensions, leg press, and finishing off with some um, GHRs and seated hamstring curls. So I just did a warm up set with, uh, I think it's plate number nine. Seven or nine, one of the two. I'll be able to tell you in a minute when I turn around and look at the actual stack, but uh, just did one warm up set. Now I'm going to do two working sets of uh, 15 to 20 reps. Play number 13, which I believe is the same weight I did last week. And yeah, just punch out as many as I can. Uh, yeah, the only good thing about the lower volume sessions like today and like this week is uh, I finished my training earlier. That's the only thing that I like about it. Just because it's like more time efficient when you've got other stuff on throughout the day that you need to get done, that's just as much of a priority as training, if not more. Um, but yeah, if I didn't need the time like I do right now, I'd probably not be enjoying these, uh, these shorter sessions as much, but because time is of the essence and it's probably my most um, scarce commodity at the minute, um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying these, these shorter sessions, that's for sure. And my body's enjoying them too, as much as I'm mentally not enjoying them. Because um, I know sleep isn't great at the moment. I'm getting, I'm averaging three to five hours sleep a night. I'm in bed, I'm doing everything right. Like I'm in bed for eight to nine hours a night, but because we're on the top level of our building and we've got a nightclub, a rooftop nightclub, literally right above our floor. We have the dance floor and the DJ, like it's literally right above our bedroom. So we just hear this like loud thumping music until four in the morning. And I'm pretty certain that's the reason why I'm waking up, say, 10 to 15 times minimum per night and getting very broken sleep. I'm getting, according to my uh, Apple Health app, I'm getting no deep sleep. Or if I do, I'm getting less than 15 minutes of deep sleep a night. I'm getting less than an hour of REM sleep a night and all the rest is just like normal, kind of like filler sleep, I guess you could say. So yeah, recovery is by no means anywhere near as good as it could or should be. But uh, we've only got a few more days in this room that we're in and then I'm going to be uh, confronting the the, uh, the the lobby, the people at the lobby, the receptionists, to hopefully get us to move to a different room on a different level so we don't have that disruption going on. But yeah, time to stop gas bagging and get the first set done. So it was, uh, warm up was number nine. We're doing 13 now. Whew. Okay, considering I only really hit adductors and hamstrings so far, I'm not going to bother resting um, for uh, 
any of uh, any of the time between hamstring curls and this. This will go straight away, so haven't really rested since finishing that last set. Just moved the camera and moved over here. And I'll dive in and do the first working set now. I've only got two of these today as well, so shouldn't be too bad. But uh, heavier today, so today is obviously the heavier uh, league day when it comes to the quad work. Doing um, sets 12 to 15 on this instead of uh, like 20 plus rep sets like I do on the leg session or quad session later in the week. Just gonna adjust the seat back one more. I like to have the seat back further so you get more extension. So less of a like a, a crease or a bend at the hip joint. And that way I'm able to get more rec fem involved in the leg extension. Because the rec fem acts over the knee and the hip joint. So in order to stretch it more effectively, you wanna have one of those joints locked out more i.e. if you're doing a leg extension where the, the knee joint's going to be articulating you want to extend and, and keep the the hip joint extended and locked out a little bit more and that will allow you to stretch uh, the rec fem in this bottom position more decent first set 15 reps now I would like to increase the weight but I know it's gonna creep up on me on this second set so I'm just gonna keep it where it's at and just really try uh, maximize the quality of the, the reps like the execution of them uh, I think I can probably pause a little bit longer flex a little bit longer especially at the start of that set a little bit more on all those reps and control that negative a little bit better um, so yeah that's what I really focus on doing just standardizing the reps making them look like near identical to one another from rep one all the way to the, the final rep, whatever that is. But um, yeah, only one set to go. It feels weird doing this little volume, but it's part of the process and I just have to be comfortable with sometimes the things that make me feel uncomfortable. Uh, for you that might be higher volume or for you it might be like me when you have to cut back and pull back. Depending on your personality, your psychology, you might find pushing easier or pulling back uh, easier. And, and the they're posing one harder. Uh, yeah, this and then on the leg press for two sets <laughs> and uh, then the, the final hamstring glute work to finish off. Oh. first of two sets so it shouldn't take too long but it's still gonna be hard because I'll, I'll make sure that they're hard uh, first one maybe not so much but the second one is always challenging 
because uh, it's that humility fatigue. Um, you get like, I suppose like 15, 16 reps deep, it starts getting really hard. You manage to punch out the first set with like a rep in the tank maybe, and then the second set you've just got nothing left. You have to like rest pause for like four reps away from the end of the set. But um, yeah, just really focusing this week. Quality of execution again, while the volume is low, I want to challenge myself in other ways. Because uh, it's not always just about like doing more than last week. Sometimes it's about doing last week but better. And periods like this, phases like this, maintenance phases or holding phases, that's exactly what they're for. Um, just really, I don't like using the word optimize, it's fucking shit, but basically just improving what you're already doing. So I won't use the word optimize, but uh, an idiot would say optimizing what you're doing, but yeah. Oh, optimal is just a stupid fucking phrase that shouldn't exist. So it's gonna be a whole lot harder. I'm gonna read some. Alright, I'm playing a gambling man's game here. 4% left on the, the battery that's in the camera right now. I've got one more that's partially charged that I can switch to after this, but I don't know if it's gonna get the full set in. It might die before I get to finish this entire working set so fingers crossed it doesn't and I get it all in and uh, I also just downed the last of my shake of EAAs so I could throw up this might end bad but hopefully not usually I don't throw up so should be fine record that's how I train in deload weeks <laughs> so if you uh, don't train that hard in a normal week of training then I'm really questioning your ability to actually train hard enough because even though that might have looked hard that's easy compared to a all-out set <sighs> Same weight as, uh, as last week, just um, aiming for 12 to 13 reps to match 
what I got last week. I'm not really aiming to hit a PB on this. Um, but, I mean, if it's there, I can't promise you that I won't go for it. But, uh, two sets of this, really kind of like hunching forward to maximise that hip flexion, stretch the hamstring out as much as possible in this starting position. That way I can just basically maximise the uh, stretch mediated hypertrophy on this exercise. Oh. Oh. Sternum just cracked. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Not bad. Two rep PB. Second and final set for the session. It's not as hot today, which is nice. It's humid, but not quite as hot, so the weather's a little bit more bearable. You're probably noticing I'm not sweating as much. Head in the game, Nick. Head in the game. Didn't quite get that full contraction, so I'm going to end it there. Cool. <sighs> My battery is officially almost out of juice. 3% uh, left, so I'm only going to record one of these sets, but I've got two sets of these. I'm just going to do body weight, AMRAP, seeing as it is a bit of a maintenance block, instead of adding like 15 kilo or 35 pounds to my chest. And uh, just do more reps, basically. Longer pauses at the stretch and the contraction. You know the, the drill. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. 